start this session on Brazil as one of the great, great countries. And we're very lucky to have Dr. Ayub, <laughs> Rafael Ayub, who's been studying with us at Wagner and also helped me teach an undergraduate course last semester. And after taking two courses with me, he had an overdose, so I decided he would have to <laughs> help teach. <laughs> um, and uh, he's actually going to stay here next year, so we'll continue working together in some way. So you will start, and I'll comment. How's that? Good. I just wanted to give a, like, a brief introduction, because it's very hard to talk about a country if you don't have like a complete picture of the country. So I just want to start like a few a few of the details and information in Brazil. And then after that, uh, we're going to watch a little clip that was posted. And then after, we're going to talk to the doctor that was talking in that video, was one of the, the founders of the Family Health Program in Brazil, which is a very successful program for... Uh, That's Dr. Becker. And are we going to watch that clip before or not? Before, while I... Before, just in case anybody didn't watch it. Yes. So this is a map of Brazil. If you guys have an idea, Brazil is approximately the same size as the U.S. Uh, dimensions, and divide. It's 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 actually very similar to the U.S. It's also a federation. We have 27 states. Uh, you can see in that picture the density. So Brazil is very is very dense on the coast and last populated in the in the middle of the country. Uh, São Paulo, the most populated state, the richest state is this one right here, and this is the one that everybody knows, Rio de Janeiro, where you have the samba and the carnival. This is a very uh, European part of Brazil, so if you go there, everybody is blonde, blue eyes, it's very, very, uh, it's the, the one area of Brazil that's not very mixed. And this is the northeast, which is very mixed, a lot of African Brazilians, uh, great area. And this is the Amazon. So if you have this is this is the, the most this area here is the richest and, and, and most populated area of Brazil. São Paulo. São Paulo is this one. Yeah. São Paulo is this one. And the city of São Paulo. We have the state of São Paulo, like New York. We have the state of São Paulo and the city of São Paulo, which is huge. Uh, the metropolitan area of São Paulo has twenty over twenty million people. It's a very big and uh, rich area. Since this class is about reform, I wanted just to give some information about. The SUS, how the Brazilian health system got to where it is now. So in, until like from uh, the 60s until 1987, we had a military dictatorship in Brazil, uh, and when that dictatorship uh, fell, the, of course it was a long years of fighting and, and 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 people pushing for democracy again, and when it finally did, the whole country was united. Uh, into democracy and, and rights, so it was a great moment to, to be able to reform everything, and, and that's when they finally pushed for this this new system of health, uh, this universal system of health, that it, it says on the constitution, you can read it there, health is a right of all and a duty of the state, and shall be guaranteed uh, by means of social and economical policies aimed at reducing the risk of illness and other hazards at the universal and equal access to actions and services for promotion, protection, and recovery. So the basic thing is health is a right of all. Everyone who is in Brazil, even visitors, are entitled to free health care. And one of the questions that I, I proposed before the class was when it says universal, Brazil, everything is free. It doesn't matter if you need a Band-Aid or if you need a heart transplant, you're entitled to it. Uh, so they started planning the SUS. At Just a moment, if everything is free, there's about 30% of total expenditures are private, are they not? Well, because <coughs> Brazil is a mix, we're going to get there. Brazil is a mix of private public. We have another, so other than SUS, we have, uh, which is the next slide, we have uh, uh, the private subsector, which it's a little bit like in the U.S. You have the, you have this uh, private providers and you have the private insurers. So if you want to supplement your your coverage, and uh, thirty something percent of Brazilians do, depending on where which region we we're talking about, you they have access to these private facilities, which of course uh, some of them have a higher quality of care, and you can also uh, get care faster and and. Uh, so that's why people get supplemented. But even people who have 
supplemental health care, private health care, they end up using SUS for, for some services. So for example, heart transplant, if you see the rates of uh, people who get heart transplants, liver, liver transplants, mo a lot of them have private insurance. But of course, if they have private insurance, the private insurance now not, not always call, covers everything. So they end up using the SUS because then they don't have to pay anything. So it's more for for more the more simple to meal uh, procedures that they end up using the the private uh, the private sector. So the SUS is they have five principles. The SUS is the uh, the unified health system. So universality. So everybody has a right to. to to, to healthcare, integrality. So uh, people have right to everything. It doesn't matter what you need; you're entitled to it. Equity. Uh, everybody has the same right. And decentralization. So this is one of the important things that we have to, to understand. Brazil is big, like the U.S. And before we had a system that uh, the federal government used to control everything. So you don't get the, the, the particularities or each, each, each area. You have the Amazon with very few people living with a lot of uh, diseases specific to that region. And you have Sao Paulo, which is a city like New York, which is very different. So how can you plan a health system with, with areas being so different from each other? So the idea was to decentralize and make the healthcare system more appropriate to each region, uh, each region and get a, get a better and closer management of this system. And participation, which is not really true, but people every four years they're supposed to have they have it, but nobody really uses it. They have a, a this this uh, rallies with people and discussions to what they should, which direction should the system go, and and, and changes. So Brazil does have a universal public health system that covers everyone and and it covers everything. But still, Brazil is open into the Brazil has a market for private healthcare as well, and that that, that market includes the private subsector of providers and the private health insurance, and uh, a lot of people choose to have that and the ones that can afford it, because of course you can skip lines. When one of the things that we we're going to discuss is that if you have a universal healthcare, uh, eventually people are gonna everybody is going to need everything and eventually you're going to have delays and waiting time so people you let me put that differently the way economists do. they say if everything is free at the point of consumption then you have a situation where you have excess demand yeah when you have excess demand and price is zero you have waiting lines mm -hmm. if you have higher demand and you have a price the price does the rationing yeah. if the price is zero mm -hmm. you have waiting times so just to put a figure on what you just said, 25%, am I correct, of the population? 26.3% have the private insurance. Those are going to That's a quarter of the population. And that, that, that's something we should discuss with Dr. Becker. Yeah, so I have a few questions about that with him. Because it's an, but it's, it's just like Britain. It's just like the classic national health service, except that in Britain, only 15% of the population has private insurance and uses that for largely what they call cold surgery or private hospitals or Harley Street or, or, or anything really serious, they don't even provide in the private sector. So they'll end up in the National Health Service. And I think it's the same thing yeah, it's the same in thing. Brazil. Yeah, it's the same you, you have bone marrow transplantation, you're not going to go to a private hospital. You have a heart transplant, Maybe for open heart surgery there will be clinics that do it. I don't they have, know. Yeah, no, they have some, some pretty good high right. class right. Uh, private Sectors, but the problem is that most of the insurances don't cover everything, so you end up sometimes people who can't who can't have. I mean, even middle class people have sure. health insurance in Brazil, but they cannot afford if they have to have an open heart transplant and they go to a private clinic. That we have many of them uh, that that do this type of procedure, but they're going to eventually have to pay a share, and that share is going to be right high. So, so they what? choose to go to SUS that they don't pay anything. Right. So that's what in the U.S. we call underinsurance for those who are insured and not quote unquote adequately insured and still paying more. Um, okay. And then from these people who have the private insurance, like in the US, the great majority have it through their jobs, their, their employers. So 40 million people have a collective plan that usually are from their, their, their companies and only 11, 12 million people buy it on the, uh, on the private market. Uh, so like we were saying, the public sector is, is stronger now in the primary care. 
So now in Brazil, which is one of the things that Dr. Becker is going to talk about, Brazil has been focusing in primary care for the last uh, 10, 15 years. Because before that, Brazil was a country that uh, was focused on building big hospitals. So you see the hospitals from the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, huge hospitals with uh, quaternary, tertiary procedures, very uh, 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 specialized and then and, and very centralized. So the idea after the SUS is and, and every, 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 with, with the with time passing, it was people were focusing more and more on Brazil in the centralizing, creating smaller units that provide primary care, even a, a lot of focus in prevention of the diseases. So the, the, the public uh, system now is more focused in, in the primary care, while uh, you get the primary, uh, the, the, the private sector uh, is more focused in diagnostic and small to medium procedures. And then it goes back to, to the public system when you have this high end. Uh, we have that in private as well, but a lot of people end up using the, the, the high end procedures. They end up using the SUS as well because of prices, of course. So this is a map that shows uh, how many people have private insurance by state. So you can see that the, the richest states are the darkest ones because, of course, people can, more people can't afford it. And then uh, the poorer states, they have less. So you can see that it gets darker in the bottom, and Sao Paulo and Rio are the, are the darkest ones. So it's just, it shows how it differs from, uh, from state to state. Some states have less than 5% of people having insurance, and some states, like Sao Paulo, have over 30% of the population covered. And even within the city of Sao Paulo, even more. Uh, this is a little table that I put to just to show uh, how the health expenditure in Brazil it's, uh, so if you see the percentage of GDP, the last one we have, 2013, it was 9.67 uh, of the GDP. But from that part, only 4.66 was public and 5.1 was private. So the last few debate, the debate that is going on in Brazil now is not only how if we should spend more percentage of the GDP on health, but how to, to shift this to spend more on the public side than, than on the private side. So they want the, 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 the population to rely less on the public on the private side and more on the public. So they want to shift these numbers to put more uh, expenditure on the public health system. So, but you can see that uh, since the creation of SUS, it went from 2.8 to almost uh, 6.5 to almost 10. That's really interesting and for comparative sake for India, could be something very useful uh, because India's I, I different. I, I'm forgetting exactly one, 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 one in three. between one and four, one and three of the public. One public, three private. Okay, so if SUS is the main factor in going from total six point six five to nine point six seven, that speaks to government reform and government investment being you know that's that's the driver. And that's what happened. There was massive government uh, investment from the and top so down. And so U.S. Right. last week, uh, right. so now there's yeah. a... See, That's I, a good point. I think it was in 1999, they yeah. pushed for a new legislation that says that Brazil has to spend, the federal government has to spend at least the same amount that they spent the, the year before on mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. with the correction to the increase of the GDP. So they cannot spend less. And then, and then there is also a law that says that states, because we have a decentralized, so this fed, the, the, we have money coming from the federal government, government state level government, and uh, city level. So, uh, so we have hospitals from the public city hospitals, public city uh, states, uh, public hospitals, and federal hospitals, and uh, primary care institutions. Everything is is mixed. And uh, so the city level and state level, they have a minimum to stop, a minimum amount that they have to spend, which goes from 12 percent to 15 percent of their budget. So the city level has to spend at least that of a, a 12 or 15, depending on the area, percent of their uh, of their uh, budget for that year in health. Uh, so that also changed a lot. Instead, a lot of cities actually spend more. Sao Paulo, for example, spends more than the minimum required. Some cities are still struggling in that line, but uh, Sao Paulo is one of the cities that now. But if the city has a lower budget, the percent is lower and the spending is lower. Yeah. The percentage is, is always the same. The, 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 well, no, it varies from 
you just said. 12 to 15, well, but, but, it, it, it's but, the, but the, the amount spent will be much less in a poorer than a richer. Is there any mechanism to cross-subsidize that by the federal government? So the federal government, the federal the federal government sends money to the state level and to the, to the city level in two ways. One way is depending on the infrastructure they have and so how much they see, how much did the state or the city spend last mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. in their public hospitals. Mm -hmm. And then they, next year they project how much money they're going to give to the state or the city based on the last year. But also they, mm -hmm. a yeah. part of the money they send is per capita. Yeah. So each city gets uh, gets money for health per capita by the population. Mm -hmm. So cities that have more people get more money. Cities that have less people get less money. Sure. And cities who have less, more people and more infrastructure get more money. So, but the point is that the federal government is cross subsidizing. Yes, and that's a problem in China that we can take up next week. Or Central government is very good at telling provinces that they need to spend, but they're not very good at transferring the resources from the center to the periphery. They put the burden on the local authorities to spend. So that's just a com just to compare, so you guys have a, uh, an idea of how much. So Brazil is is in the green area, eight to ten percent of the GDP in spending. So you can see uh, it's similar to Australia. Some Nordic countries, Spain, uh, Portugal, Italy, uh, Argentina. So, and then you see the U.S. kind of standing out. So, <laughs> we've been <laughs> we've been talking a lot about that. Uh, so, just just to put it, Brazil in the, in the global context of how much we're spending in health.